We'll call the Board of Sewer Commissioners to order Thursday, April 25th, 2013 at 6 p.m. The agenda approval, approval of minutes, 328.13, mail, Chief Operator's Operations Report, and to be added, the auditors would like to visit with us for a moment. So those motion. Right on there, we have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. <clears throat> Agenda for or yeah, approval of the minutes 32813. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mail. None. None. Chief Operator's Operation Report. Okay, all required reports. I'm sorry, I have a cough drop in my mouth, so <laughs> all required reports were completed and sent to the state. Um, I received an application for a conversion of the Oak Hill School to a three-unit apartment building as it pertains to the expansion of sewer use. I've touched base with A&E to ensure that the current sewer service will support the apartment expansion, and they've confirmed it well. I see no problem with the issuance of this permit. I've drafted the final allocation permit for the board approval, which will add two EUs to the system once the apartments are finished. So they'll still have to go through the sewer connection application, um, but this is just letting them know for their construction purposes for banks and all of that, that, that we will allow them to do this and the service is suitable for their needs. Okay, we have that in front of us. What's your budget, guys? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Exactly. And I'd like to jump right into um, the email that I sent everyone regarding sewer decommissions. I think everyone got that. Um, just uh, Ron wanting to follow up on that and just concern it uh, for someone specifically that wants to get on a list for the fall decommission season. And looking at the budget, it appears that if we were to start with allowing three per year town line, that wouldn't affect the bottom line of the budget, especially with the new users that we see are going to be coming online. It's a starting point. It's a policy that can be changed whenever you know you feel like it needs to be addressed again. It's not like written in stone. But it would allow us to say, we are going to allow three. It would allow me to send out applications to people who are interested, process those, and at least get them on a list for spring. It would be a starting point. I'm just thinking of the wording. Um, starting point and up to three. I'm trying to think what would be a better stance on when we relook at that or revisit it. A time frame? Why um, you to could... To look at after the first year? Or yes, that's what I was thinking after the first year. Revisit in February 2015, see how that worked, and, and that's sort of where I was going with that too. Okay. So the board needs to move on now so I can send out applications and start reviewing them um, and start getting people on lists if I need. Okay, we're looking for a motion on a three EU, three EUs discontinuance per year. Well, that's only if they shut it right down. They're gonna they can't decommission this one and put it in their own sewer. Absolutely not. If they're on the line, they got to be on and the line. And if they want to put another mobile home in that spot in the future, say a personal property or a house or an apartment building or whatever it may be, they have to, they have to, they have to go through the whole application process again. Absolutely, yes. Now this pipe has to be removed also. Cut and removed, so and that will be at their expense. That's all else. Else. So this is all like it never happened. Yep. And I have all that paperwork and the, the plans and the specs and everything drafted. So we're, we're good to go when that happens. Motion. Do we have a motion on it? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, <clears throat> Leslie McVicker from BPA Boston came out to inspect the levy fix. She had some concern regarding whether or not the portion of the levy that washed out might have contained tannery contaminants. Uh, but she assured us that the portion of the levy affected actually did not contain any um, contaminants. 
and we're going to have a meeting here at the facility on May 1st to discuss land restriction use and the contaminated areas so that we're a little better educated of what we can and can't do and which areas are actually contaminated. I received a visit from a Green Mountain Power Field representative that needed clarification regarding the location of Sewer Main and the Baptist Church Sewer Service on Main Street, Mount Valley. Um, I made a copy of the as built form and I highlighted all the sewer lines. Uh, a new power pole is being added out the road. It's anticipated that the church will be expanding its service to include a parsonage this summer. Um, I've been in contact with the person or he's familiar with the sewer connection application process due to a previous submittal. So again, I foresee that will be another EU coming online at the end of summer. I provided a tour of the facility and tube stations to the newest member of the board, Rich. And um, he showed a great deal of interest in, in the workings of the facility. I really appreciate his visit. That was nice. It was my pleasure. Um, I learned an awful lot. And um, I think that you and your crew are very resourceful uh, with the ideas and things you've come up to run this in an extremely efficient manner, in my belief. So, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, let's see. All of the trees in the brush along the railroad uh, track fence line have been cleared for safety and security. And I just pass along my pictures of some of the things that we're doing. It makes a big difference, but it's also the security aspect yep. because we want to make sure we keep the people out and away, of course. The cement board on the septage building was starting to pull away. When I say starting, I mean really starting. It was obviously a problem. Um, this board is a little bit harder to work with than a normal board. You have to pre-drill holes and then put the nails in, re everything, and then repaint. So um, they've begun doing that as well, as you can see. I don't know how, yeah, it was pretty significant, and it was all around the building that had begun to happen. And the high winds we recently had blew off a section of the soffit of the SBR building in the breezeway. And I called Vermont Roofing to come and fix this. It's 25 feet high, and that wind was within. I mean, we had a ladder that, that uh, tall. Um, they were great. They were here the same day. We had wind predicted the next day as well, and I could just envision, I, here's the picture, I could just envision all of this stuff that just being down the road and how expensive that would have been to fix. And um, let's see, we have to check our effluent recorder once a week, and Carl had originally fabricated a effluent check recorder plate out in the UV building, and it just over time, with the water coming up and down, it, it just had worn out, so they fabricated a brand spanking new one. Again, just saw a scrap that we have, and just trying to save as much money as we can. Um, we did have to order a new battery and replace it in the portable generator, but it's been seven years, so that's expected. On oh, yeah, April 8th, I was called at 3.30 a.m. Um, due to a pump one fail alarm at pump PV2, and when we went to the uh, station, we turned on the motor, on the motor control panel, and that motor was making noise. We've heard before, it's very strange, and we just figured it was probably a um, capacitor failure. And so we've been through this before. I had some on the shelf to change them out, and we got that right back up and running, and I ordered more. Make sure we have more on the shelf. Um, on April 12th, I was called up 5.30 a.m. due to a power fail at PV1 in Alpha. And that was unexpected, because there really was no reason for any power fails at the time. So I called the power company immediately and reported it. And we drove down to the station to get a visual that everything was okay because there was no high winds or snow or anything that would, I thought maybe a tree fell. And everything looked fine. And the power company was there within a half an hour and then got power back up and we were able to reset everything. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they fixed. It took like uh, probably about, I don't know, an hour and a half and we were able to reset everything. Um, on April 12th at 7 p.m., I was called to PV2 for a pump 2 fail alarm. The other one was a pump 1. When I, when I arrived, it didn't appear anything was wrong. I, I ran the motors, I checked the pump, nothing was leaking. I simply reset the alarm, but on April 16th at 1 a.m., I received another pump number 2 fail to start. So sometimes when that happens, it's an electronic component in one of the panels and we have schematics that we trace 
to find which resistors or capacitors or relays may be um, at fault. And the big trace that we think it was this little teeny resistor in the R2 cabinet. We replaced that resistor and we replaced the relay. I have them on hands. And um, they haven't had a long since. So knock on wood. So finally, uh, April 15th at 8.30 p.m., I received an alarm from the facility. And all it said was the battery is low. I had never gotten that alarm before. Usually they'll announce a number before an alarm. So I always know, okay, 19 is MP1. And, and so came to the station and it was actually the dialer was alarming on itself. It was the battery, the backup battery and the dialer itself. So it was calling on itself, telling me my battery is low. So, yeah, I took a picture of the battery right then and there and just emailed my contact at Granger and we had a battery the next day. Granger's fantastic, fabulous. And we did some spring cleanup at PC2. We had a large ML of the driveway, just push down low. And it's just a very you know, um, sharp incline and it's, you can't help but push the gravel down. But I'd like to thank Casey and Chris for coming and helping us out with that. Um, Casey brought his loader down and Chris helped us with the raking and that just made it a lot easier. We all worked together on that. We noticed a leak under the check valve on pump number two of PV3, and we figured the packing on the check arm just needed to be tightened, but we couldn't because the erosion on the plate that had it fixed in place was frightening, actually, and then we went to take the bolts out. They were too long, so we had to cut them to get the bolts out, to get the plates out, and then it fell apart. So Carl and Jeff came back, um, the plant and got, we had a, a spare check. The check wasn't the same size, but the plates were. So we're able to take that plate, use it on that one, and they're gonna fabricate some more of those. And just a big giant thanks to everyone who's parking in the lower parking area at the wastewater treatment facility and walking over the levee to fish. Really appreciate that. I've noticed a huge difference in the amount of people that are parking and walking and that really helps keep the money stabilized. So, and it's, it's a pleasure to see the bike, bicyclists and the kids pushing you know, their toys. And it's wonderful to see um, that they are being used responsibly. Yeah, and that works for everybody because of them utilizing it what is. rules we got. It can be kept open. Right. And it prevents flooding <coughs> in the future of the whole town. And, um, my last comment was actually following up on what you've written down for number five. So, um, I apparently there have been uh, two time cards that I've submitted that I've had questioned by the like town auditors, and I responded to the questions and rating except for one, which was submitted this evening. Before you go into that, Darcy and I talked about this for a moment, and discuss whether we do it in the executive session or not. And my feeling was not to, and after we talked about it for a minute, we decided to keep it in an open session. So this is why you were informed this evening instead of in advance on what this was. I've given you each a copy of it, and I'm sure if you had time to review it if you would like me to read my responses out loud to the particular questions or if you feel like I address them amply through the written answer and I can address the last questions that the auditor auditors, uh, had that wasn't on the list. Well, <clears throat> after reading that I kind of almost like to go through this Step by step. Okay. If you don't mind. We have a copy of your response. Here, I'll give this one. You want to, I think you want to get one extra, but okay. if you can share that. Okay. The first question was PR warrant day <coughs> 613. DP time card listed six hours work, two hours sick, and two hours overtime. The two hours overtime was marked donated. We question whether an employee donating time is acceptable or an FLSA violation. Linda doesn't know. We need to talk to the board of selectmen. My response to this is, I will no longer donate time to the town. The second question, PR warrant, data 224.13. DP listed five hours worked and three hours vacation pay. 
There should be four and a half hours work and three and a half hours vacation pay, according to the times listed on the card. Lived and noted and will correct him. There is no error on this time card. <clears throat> DP worked five hours straight with no lunch on this day. The remaining three hours were taken as vacation time. No corrections need to be made. Question three. PR warrant did 2-24-13. CD shows eight hours vacation, while DP shows two hours work and six hours sick time. Was lab work done, and who covered the plant until 4 p.m.? Linda referred this to the board of selectmen. There is no... I'd like to interrupt you there just for a moment. Um, I'm not sure uh, the checking on the lab work being done. Uh, that's a management control item, and being that you are our employee, I'm not sure if it's correct. I can see somebody being interested, but I'm not sure if it's proper procedure to be asking the question without it coming to us on was this being taken care of, meaning that you do. I think I this. think the most important point to me there is that you do know the lab works done. We do know I have checks and controls in place at this facility. Um, Ray's toured the facility. He's also aware that I have checks in place um, and records are kept regarding all lab work. And having said that, I'll read my response. There is no error on this time card. It is well known that this facility isn't, per se, covered 24 hours per day by human presence on site. It's impossible. Only two full-time employees covering the plant 23 pump stations and 691 user services. Regardless, this facility is monitored 24 hours per day by myself. I'm in constant contact via phone, computer, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even during sick and vacation time. I'm always on call. I was honest in my reporting of being sick. Furthermore, the question of whether lab work is being done, I feel is unwarranted. Myself and Carl are Vermont State Licensed Wastewater Operators and we're well aware of our duties and responsibilities. We take them very seriously, as does the state. And finally, the last question. PR warrant dated 2-24-13. There was a question as to whether the time cards at the wastewater treatment facility are made out in advance. Also, no start-finish time on overtime worked. Does this violate FLSA and conflict with stated policy about accurate time cards. Again, Linda reports to the board. My response is as follows. A question as to whether time cards are made out in advance is easy to answer. They are not. Once again, this question is unwarranted. There is no error regarding overtime. The time cards are accurate. We are paid an automatic two-hour overtime when called out. Hourly recording is not required by the select board up to the two hour period. Anything over two hours is recorded. We are extremely diligent in taking care of emergencies as they arise. And we strive to ensure that sewer services are not interrupted and that members of the select board receive no complaints regarding our work. We endeavor to continue this high level of efficiency. And those are my responses to those questions. If you have other comments, I'm going to let the board run their thoughts by it. I will give mine on the seven years that I've been on the board. <clears throat> we have had no complaints <clears throat> from this operation. In fact, it would be far be it. We've had more compliments from different agencies that have toured this facility in the operation the way it's run and the problems that we have not had uh, due to Carl and Darcy's diligence in keeping things up to speed and just doing a damn good job of keeping everything in place and as neat as it is. So my compliments go out to actually Jeff working with them too, all three of them for a, a, a great job. Uh, we don't have to look over their shoulder because we get we get information from the state and all sorts of people if there was problems. Absolutely. And we also get phone calls from people that had lines when they weren't working properly and knock on wood we don't have that and that's that's really a, a feather in all your caps so thank you thank you steve i appreciate with that anybody would like to make a response i have something i'd like to say 
um, I'm a little bit confused um, when you said that you are no longer going to be giving time to the town. Now, excuse me, now, am I to believe that the three hours that we're talking about is a maximum by contract? I mean, you have the, you have the um, capability and the authorization to charge anything under that. So if you're charging two hours and somebody's saying you have to charge three, then that's costing the sewer sewer customers an extra, an extra amount of money. Yeah, I think you're referring to the three hours um, that was in my original employment um, you file. Call uh, not only get called in, but on Saturdays or Sundays. Right. And the reason for the extra hour for myself was for the pay differential of being on call 24-7. Most people who are called for short periods of 24-7 are paid a shift differential of a dollar to two dollars an hour to do that. Um, this was something that we compromised and worked out was just one three hour Saturday or Sunday or any time on the weekend. The weekends would be automatic three hours. Uh, I, when I first started here, the budget was just so tight. It was just so tight. Um, I just couldn't see charging the users that extra hour on the weekends. I chose not to. Um, I'm being put in a position where I'm being told that I'm, I'm violating something, uh, a federal label or whatever. So if, that, if I'm going to be called out for doing something beneficial, I, what else can I do? I, I just won't donate my time anymore in town. It'll cost users more. Okay. Unfortunately. I didn't want to respond to that same question. Thank you. Um, so basically in the short run by not really investigating this before it really came out, in the long run it ended up costing the town more money on the user's fee. It cost, all of these cost less. Yeah, but here hours. But not donating this hour, in the long run, it's going to donate the users more money, or cost it, the users more it money. It will now cost the users more money because I'm no longer able to donate my time. I just want to state the job well done. Should have been investigated before any remarks made. Stupid. On um, whose behalf? I'm, I'm confused. Are you? Whoever did all this investigating, I imagine the auditors. I mean, we got this more than on this last one. I've been on the board now. Almost a year and a half, and I know a lot of people hooked up to the sewer, and I have not received a phone call, Thank you. plate, or nothing. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. To me, this place don't exist. And, and you know, that's the way I like. That's it's the way quiet. I you don't hear it. nothing. <laughs> I mean, I think we're nitpicking on a couple of these items, but okay. Thank you. Nitpicking's got to stop. I appreciate your. If I may, too, I've been in the uh, service business for a long time. And when you're on call 24-7, 365, and you're tied to a phone or an answering service or something, if you've never been in that position okay. of having to do that, you have no idea what it's like because the minute you leave the confines of your whatever town or what somebody has to be notified somebody ha it's not an easy thing to do and you and i both had this discussion and um unless you've done it for a number of years it's it's not an easy thing to do so i uh, haven't left this town more than an hour and a half away in seven years yeah that's my commitment level to do this and now you're getting beat down over it. <laughs> and now I'm getting, uh, yeah. <laughs> so well, I appreciate what you've done and what you've I can hear it. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> you have any comment? No, I, uh, I know that when you, you get called in any place I ever worked, they, uh, if you get called in, you only hear 15 minutes, you still get a minimum pay. I know that. Any place I ever work, so because you're getting called out, I know that. But uh, as far as I mean, we haven't had any problems to speak of. Thank you. I ain't seen that. Okay. I'll address the last question. Yes, please. Okay. This is a question out there. Um, Addition that they didn't ask Linda. Oh. Wastewater treatment facility has a truck. 
Town will have a transfer station. Why do we pay $60 per month for a dumpster at the wastewater treatment facility? Um, I, I know that you're all aware of what goes into that dumpster. Mm -hmm. It's screenings from upstairs and screening unit, and it is also some very nasty screenings out of the septage area. Um, Duck Tam is very aware of what is in there, and they treat it accordingly. That would be the answer. I don't, think it's a, I don't think it would be appropriate to go and dump this, put it in the back of the truck and handle it as many times as we have to handle it just to get it up there for safety reasons alone. And I gotta believe also with anything that is considered hazardous, we have to have a special permit to be traveling over the road with any kind of hazardous materials. Yeah, yeah. I really think you want to call that hazardous. If it's got chemicals in it, it's hazard. I, I'm only, not, only just because it's not TV. Well, it's, it's chemicals of some sort, so the amount of hazardous, it's being contained by an operator that works with us. We just make sure well, Tam knows what is right. in there and they dispose of it properly. That's all right. I'll say. I that's don't. I can't, I, can't speak, I can't speak any any further than that. That that would be it. Yes. Can I follow up with a couple of questions, please? Okay, the board all set. Okay. Go ahead. Donating the overtime. Uh, we will not do that again, so it's, it's a policy at the plan here that there'll be no more donated over time. Correct. Off working off the clock. Correct. Okay. That's good, no? You notice we have... Well, I already answered that question, so I'm I not know. sure you ask that again. No, that's all right. <laughs> it's a policy. Uh, the question, uh, and uh, the scheduled overtime on the weekends, mm -hmm. when you and Carl come in to have to do those mandatory lab work, mm -hmm. Why is it impossible to put the time down there? It doesn't you're still it's gonna It's not be... necessary. It's an unnecessary stop. Period. Let's do say you, do you require me to put down the times that we're here as my board? We haven't yeah. We haven't had any problems. Is there any problem? There, if there's an accident, you need to prove the time that you're here for disability or for an injury claim. It's imperative to protect the town to have a time. No one is. I you, think that's an insurance question, not an auditor question. Can you ask the insurance company for me on that matter? Can you check our insurance? Because it's certainly something that I don't feel comfortable as answering. We don't have the answer to that right question now. That, because you're on a call and. Because there's really no set time you had to be there. So am, I, am I supposed to write down at 1.30 in the morning? I, mean, I write down 1.30 in the morning, and that's when I'm called and take care of that issue. I'm sure an insurance company, if I got hurt, wouldn't be concerned that I didn't write 1.30 to 2.15. But we'll check into that, right? You don't have to answer that right now. Well, I think as a, you know, as a user, and I, I concur with much that's been said here about the plan, and what my concern as an auditor is that we have accurate time cards that reflect the work that is done here. I think the ta time cards and are accurate for I insurance purposes. We'll look into that. Do you have anything else? Please let me finish. I just think it's important to know when people are working here at the plant. It's not in the, we're not, uh, no one's impugning anybody's reputation or work ethic or anything of that nature. But it is important. You have extra, extra time on the time card for your times. <coughs> Uh, you indicate when you go to lunch, most time. Uh, no, I just write lunch down, right? Because we go to lunch at a different time every day, depending on when we have time to go to lunch. Thanks. Our schedules, we don't make widgets here. I will check with David Newell on this. I do believe, because of the emergency call-in, if anything goes off, that you are, and this is my assumption, but i got to believe we're real close, being the type of facility this is, and the importance that it is, that you are covered around the clock, coming in and out of this building, as a chief operator. I'm on call 24-7. Hey, the emergency a, call are not We are not the question. It's a Saturday and Sunday schedule. What's the difference? Saturday, What's the difference? Saturday is scheduled over What's the difference? There is a difference. There is a difference. Excuse me, but if, And I think we'll just, yeah. If I may, and if Steve, if you're yeah, correct, this can all be put to bed very easily with a simple phone call to our insurance company Thank that you. says if Darcy is covered 24-7, 365, it doesn't matter if she's doing lab work or she's working on a pump. 
That 24-7-365 is 24-7-365. So let's get that answer from the insurance company and pursue it from there. I'm making a motion to table that question to further notice until we find out. There's no need to hash it at all. Great. I agree. One, one question, which uh, is this always the same exact thing or do you have different? When you come, like, I mean, I've worked in the water industry and stuff. Sometimes you go to check. Well, they don't only draw on a sample. Sometimes you, there's other things. It may be time that's. And, and we're giving you, well, that's, that's what we decided on when the thing started, was a couple hours, Saturday and Sunday, to, for someone to do that. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, I, I do water down in, uh, in New York State, and I go there on a Saturday. The testing. A Friday. Yes. yes. See? And I, I, don't only, I go there to coordinate the solution and things like that, but I also check the pumps. Right. I check the, I make sure that the chlorinator's working, right. things like that, and, it, and I get a standard fee for doing that, just like what we're giving you, but I right. presume sometimes you probably, you might notice something, you have to do a little more, sometimes it's a quicker step. You're right. But it's still a, a breakup of the day. You're right. So I got no complaints with, the, with that. But you're exactly right with what you've stated, and our duties are similar to oh. what you've experienced, yes. And I'd like to make one other suggestion too, uh, Steve, as long as you're going to contact the insurance company, um, if it is not so that Darcy and Carl are not covered, how much would a writer be to cover that also, okay, uh, to make an, uh, an addendum to our insurance policy? Okay. I would be. I, that's totally a wonderful shocked. idea. If it's not on there, because it it is a twenty four seven. Yeah. With, with the town liabilities that we have to cover, I'd mm -hmm. be very shocked. Yeah. But I will certainly ask. Thank you. I, I do have. Again, and this is going to sound like I'm poking, but I, I'm having a real uncomfortable mess in this. Well, I'm sure both of you will be offended by this. And I apologize up front, but I'm not following the auditor's criteria on this at all. Uh, I've looked over the auditor's handbook, and boy, this is way out of the reach on what an auditor's position is. You can frown, but if so you read the thing, it you says you think that an auditor right. is just supposed to okay all the numbers. That's it. From what I read in the auditor's handbook, the auditor does the current physical year prepare a town report for the taxpayers of the town which they work within. Mm -hmm. and Without checking as, anything. And I'm sure in that checking you're going to do that. Well, that's but what I'm we're not doing. sure on this asking for lab work and different things. No, we're not asking for lab work. We're just time. We want to know the time. That's all. I mean, you question but, whether it was being done or not. No, that's a protection for the town. <laughs> no, you're questioning whether it's being done or not. And it, it's, I didn't it, say that. These people, it says it right you here. Did, that is your question. Was, was the lab work done? Well, yes. it's done through yours work. It was yeah. being done. And that's a requirement of the state. For Thank that. you, Ron. That's the question. So, it's completely irrelevant and mm -hmm. unwarranted. And that's what I'm saying. It's Some of your things would fall into the question that, okay, but so many of them do not. And it, it stirs up a problem of making, again, employees uncomfortable. Employees are our job. We're the ones that discipline employees. We're the ones that hire employees. If there's a problem, we need to know. But before we need to know, we need to know it's a real problem to start with. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm having issues with this, and I have had for some time. I think some other members feel that way. We are Tuesdays, we are checking warrants, time cards, um, making sure that things add up as best that we can. We are not professional orders by any means, but we are following the logic. We're checking outside vendors. We want to know about contracts that our the town has. So That's the another thing with the vendors. I'd like to just make a comment on that. I've already received um, information that one of my vendors want to drop the contract because of your phone calls. That's a management responsibility. Mm -hmm. They're used to dealing with me. Mm -hmm. If you have questions, please submit them to the board, and I'll take care of that. 
Yeah, you're affecting the management of this facility. Which vendor is that? I'm not going to tell you. It doesn't vendors. matter which vendor. It doesn't matter. matter. Okay. You're affecting the only thing you should be contacting with the vendors is the figure <laughs> that they charge us and what we pay them. Right. You shouldn't be seeing. Is there an Joe incorrect Wilson invoice that you found? Was there an incorrect invoice that you found? More or less. No. That's our job. And there's a reason sometimes where certain vendors get a contract with us versus others because there's other little bits of strings that go with that. And I don't believe that's an auditor's job to question. Well, we're getting kind of far afield here, but we are going to continue to do our work. Well, you're getting far afield when you ask these vendors this. These are people we hire. That is something else I wanted to address tonight. That's, that's the stuff that we mm -hmm. take care of, not an auditor. Now, we've had this discussion before. I don't know how many more times we've got to have it before well, we get down to earth that this is not working. From my perspective, you're affecting the way I'm managing this facility by doing that. If I lose this contract, that costs my users more money. I'm a user. I understand you user, but guess what? There's a 690 other ones out there right. too, right? And I'm accountable to them as well right. as I am to you. Sure and you're accountable to me as a taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So. Just, like the wheel does go all the way around. And we just lost a dollar an hour, which regardless whether it's legal or otherwise, I thank you for the time that you donated thank that you. to us. So as welcome. not only an employee of the town, but as a taxpayer and a resident. I think there's a lot of people that have worked within this town in different positions in management that have actually donated some of their services and haven't got bit in the ass for doing that. Right. I think that's a real low shot. You, do our Next year when the user fees go up, don't complain. Do I understand that you're encouraging people to donate time to the town? I think it's very nice when people donate wow. some services How to the town. I don't know how you misinterpret things. No, it gets into your mind about mm -hmm. the way you do. Mm -hmm. When somebody does something out of their goodness to the town, and you can turn it around to make it look like, oh boy, look what they did. It, it's amazing to me. Oh, no one's saying that, Steve. Well, boy, it sure sounds like it. It um, says in... Uh, here, right, I, I got one question, right? Always oh, enemy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we, we get $1,200 a year, okay? If you equal it out an hour we put in, we get diddly squat. So we classify us donating a lot of time during the year. Mm -hmm. Is there a problem with that, too? No, I don't think so. I mean, Right. There's a whole lot of nitpicking card? going on. Was that? Do you write it down on your time card? Yeah, I have a time card. We could just. Do you annually... write it down? I donated 25 hours to the slot board this week. No. That's fine. That's yeah. the point. So but, I don't do that anymore. Uh, all those nitpicking. That'll be the. If there's nitpicking keeps continuing, it's resolved. Well, I'm not we'll probably be with all town employees pretty soon. I can tell already it's taking effect on her. I mean, it should. It's, it's nitpicking. And that's why I say we're getting up with no employees in we, the town of Darcy does have our support, and she's hopefully well aware of that, along with Carl and, and Jeff and anybody else that works within our borders. We will slap your hand if you do something wrong, and we'll compliment you when you do it wrong. Well, thank you. So far, you only know, you know slaps. Right. <laughs> Seven years and no slaps. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I would like to uh, thank the board for least to you know answering our question but we are going to be coming back to the sewer commissioners as we do go to the select board we have modified questions we're going to ask them in a proper way and we're going to keep uh, you know asking these questions no matter how uncomfortable they may seem the taxpayers we all need to know some of these answers now maybe we're naive in certain areas well we're certainly getting an education as we go along all well, just remember this way everybody on this table is a taxpayer too absolutely right. No, I want to thank you for raising the taxes for not loan or donating any more time. I have a question for you. Um, last week, you guys agreed that um, the, um, the, the rest of the board only as selectmen only had to initial the warrants. Does that mean that you're not going to be approving them at the meeting? That approval. What I There's said no was, that really shouldn't be discussed, it's the source. Yeah, it's not I understand that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry, I just I wanted to know yeah. if we could audit them Tuesday, because if they haven't approved them, then... When I sign the warrants to check the squad... Then they're approved. Right. If okay. the guys come in and sign them, and you came in, you would not know if we had a meeting or not, because mm -hmm. they're all signed by everybody. Mm -hmm. Where if I've signed them, that means we didn't have a meeting, I signed them for the checks to go out. 
guys mm -hmm. added to it to have them initial, that means that the board okay. read them. Okay. And if, say, one of the board members wasn't here, it's not initial, which means he didn't yeah. sign it. Well, I was just wondering it. if we could audit them before you had a board they have to approving be approved. them by the whole board. And they're not approved until the board does do them, right? Linda? Not in my minutes. Right. So they're not officially approved. They've been signed to go through. But the board will approve them when they read. So they'll be in your minutes. All right. Okay. That's all I need. And I have a request as well. If you do have more questions, please put them in writing and give them to Linda. Absolutely. So I can have more time to answer them That's professionally. The yeah. yes, thank you. Thank you. Is there anything more before the board? Is there anything more before the auditors? Minutes of the meetings like this meeting, where would we find them? Town yeah. office. In the town office. There would be other minutes of the select board. Town office, I'll show you right. Okay. 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 Anything more being heard? Motion adjourned. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.